Hey guys, I'm Adam and welcome to the Art of UAV. Thanks for coming back. This is the second part to the Turnergy Evolution Controller. Um, first one we just basically got the receiver into place and the battery telemetry into place. So we're going to be doing the settings inside of the controller so it can spawn with your quad. Also we're going to be going into beta flight making sure all them upgrades are done inside of there. And then finally we'll finish on the VLE software to upgrade your ESCs. Uh, if you get lost, just drop a comment below. I'll pick up on that and answer it. But I think the best we can do is get into the computer now and get going. So let's get started. This is going to be cut into different sections. So I'm just going to do a few bits and then we'll go on to the computer side of things. But mainly what we need to get down first is getting these feet on. These actually came in the box with the Esheen Wizard. Basically we need to get these on here first because once we plug it into beta flight it's going to need to be level. What you've got to do is basically peel off the back of the stickers and you want to put the pads as close as you can to the LEDs. So just put your four pads on. Um, and that's pretty much that. Make sure your receiver's plugged in. Got an antenna on the back here for when we connect the battery. Everything's ready to go now. So yeah, just get these pads on. We'll then go onto, onto the computer. So I've put the foam feet on, as you can see. That's just gonna be nice when it comes to uh, calibrating the quad because everything's nice and flat. So that's pretty much done for the moment. We will now need to get yourself a USB cable. And there's two types of USB cable as well, one what sends uh, a charge and one what sends data. So make sure you've definitely got the right USB cable. I'm going to open up the laptop. I'm not going to go through everything and how to install Betafly and using Google Chrome and then installing all the drivers. I'll leave a link now um, that will allow you to go to one of my other videos and see exactly how I installed everything. You'll need to be able to flash your Betafly. I will quickly show you how to boot and put it into flash mode with a paper clip. So basically all you need to do is unpick your paper clip and then just get it nice and straight, both pins. And what you're going to do is basically, again you can look at my other video because it gets in a bit more in depth, but at the bottom here it actually says boot and what you want to be doing now is just putting both of these ends into both holes. So both it basically makes a loop into the board and that basically puts it into boot mode. So that's what you need to do. So I just put them two into there. Awesome. And then I'll get my computer out and uh, we can then start working on what needs to be done. What you need to do is to put that pin into the boot area on there. Watch my other video because I'll explain a little bit more information on how to do that. I'm not going to go through all the booting because it's just pointless. I'm going to quickly show you how to quickly flash it, but I'm not going to go fully through there. And I'll just take you through all my settings that I've done with my controller and my quadcopter. Anyway, when you've got it plugged into your USB cable into the uh, the flight controller, you'll have a solid blue light on if you bind it right. Anyway, what we're going to do is quickly head over here. Again, check my other video if you want to see how to download the apps and what you need. Just clicking on here. Make sure you've downloaded your drivers. On the Mac, you definitely need to do that, and then you can change them up here. Firmware flasher, go down here, use all the settings I'm using SB Racing F3, none of the others, just that standard version. Pick the newest firmware, which is 3.1.7 at the moment, and copy all these lights here. Again, look at my other video if you need any information. Once you've done that, it won't let me do it, but you need to load the firmware and flash the firmware, and that will automatically update to the newest version. It's not letting me do that, it's because I haven't got it in boot mode. Anyway, so that's how you quickly flash it. And once you've done that, you just press connect, and your quadcopter will now be displayed. Make sure it's on a level floor. Make sure it's, it's ground and you've got them pads on, and it's nice and flat. You can quickly calibrate your, oh well, your motors, your gyro. You can calibrate everything here. So you can just click on that and that will automatically do it for you. That's all you need to do on setup. I would recommend clicking this up here, enable expert mode. That will give you the extra features we need like setting the fail safe. So you can just click on that. Head on down to ports. So at the moment you'll probably just see that you've only got this one lit up, which is the U, uh, UART1. We actually need to set the serial RX down here as well. So just click on this one if you can see it. It's the third one down. I don't know if the screen is probably a little bit bright. So if we turn down the brightness quickly, guys. Hopefully that may have helped a little bit so you can see it. Right, okay. Yeah, you're clicking on this one. And then we're going to go to configuration. I'm going to try and smash through this quite quickly. 
you want to set your yours to 270, your degrees down here, just click on that, type on that. Also, just quick one, make sure you save and reboot on this so then these files save. Everything you do on each page, just make sure you save it. Once that's saved, go down here. You want to click on 270 here, set that to 270. Here will be set to, I think, PPM, RX input. Well, we're now going to iBus, so you need to set this to serial base. Click on there and then just go down the drop menu and click on iBus because it's iBus for the, the, the wizard. Once that's done, you can leave that for the moment. On here, I always recommend going to your gyro update frequency of 4. So just come off that and then set that to 4 hertz. Um, that will automatically set the bottom one, the, the PID loop. 2 hertz on that. Down the bottom, you can leave all this. Black box, yeah, telemetry. You can take off transponder because we don't have one of them if that's lit up for you. So just get rid of that. Moving to the right-hand side, we can now... I prefer one shot, one, two, five. Um, it will come on multi shot normally, but I keep on one shot. It's just a safer option for your ESCs and your motor. So I'd put that to one, two, five. Again, that's up to you if you want to keep it the way it is, but I like to change that. Minimum throttle I set to 1050, so 1050. And maximum throttle I set to 1900. That's my perimeters there. Moving down, you don't need battery voltage on this at the moment, you've got feedback. But that's something we can do in the future. Moving down here, we have, yeah, forget that. You don't need that. You can leave that for the moment. GPS, we don't have 3D mode. So that's pretty much everything in this area needs to be set. So just go ahead, hit start, uh, save and reboot on that. Once we've done that, we can now head over to failsafe. Failsafe is definitely worth having. I would set the throttle to hold. And so it's going to hold the position if you lose any signal. Or have a glitch. I've set keep the fail safe on. Here it says it will probably show out yours on 10. That's so that's like a second. Five is half a second, which is plenty. If I'm gonna lose a little bit of yeah, if I'm gonna have a glitch or something, I want that quad to drop as quick as it can. So I've set that to half a second. It doesn't sound like much, but when you're panicking and you really want that to come down, half a second's where you're gonna to need to be with your fail safe switch, which will be setting up shortly. You always say it's a drop land, it's just risky, uh, the propeller still keeps spinning, it's a bit temperamental, so I'd just say drop. It's a strong quad, if it's going to drop from there, it's going to have some, you know, it's carbon, it's probably going to handle the thing. I'd rather just drop it from the sky anyway, so I'll set that to drop. Everything else is pretty much okay, so just again, hit save and reboot on that. PID tuning, this comes in when you're a bit more of a pro. I mean, it's completely up to you if you want to have a little mess around with uh, your rates and stuff like that. But I have increased mine. I've increased my rates to uh, my RC rate anyway to 130. Recommended uh, if you're really good at it. It's probably 1.55 as max on both of them. But I'm not quite there yet. So I've set these from, uh, I think they were about 1, 100 to 130 on both. So you just go in there and touch them up and that'll just give you a little bit more, more rate to move with. That's pretty much that. We're going to go down to receiver now. So your receiver, you really want to be hitting these all at about uh, 1,500. You'll probably have fluctuations. I'll turn on my controller in a minute and show you. You can then go into the sub-trim menu on the controller, which I'll just quickly turn on anyway. I may need to, do I need to plug a battery in for this part? Yeah, okay, so I'm going to need to plug a battery in quickly, guys. Right, battery's in. There we go. So now it's now corresponding. You see this here? It's, it, you probably can't see it on my screen that well, but it's fluctuating between 1499 and 1498. So that's a little bit low. So what you need to do is go into, into the menu. Really can't see this, but hopefully you can. Sub trim. No, that's channels. Sub trim. And channel one, that's your throttle. And then you just can just up and down it. And when you up and down it, just keep looking back and try and get that as close as to uh, 15 as you can. So that's that. And then you can go through all the other channels. That's pretty much it. So make sure they're all at 1,500 for the first three anyway. Throttle should always be at 1,000. So if that's glitching, make sure that's set to 1,000. Go back into your sub trim menu and be able to do it from there. 
anything else on this thing no once you've done that that's pretty much ready to go keep all these set channel map should be aetr one two three four again save everything you're doing and move on to the next page Modes you'll see nothing will be lit up on yours this is the, the most frustrating part getting something right for yourself I, I still get my head around it now what i feel comfortable having switches set up to this is going to be a little bit tricky to show you everything but hopefully you'll you'll, you'll get a gist of what i'm trying to try and point out and what i can do if you you know if you're confused just drop me a comment and i'll uh, i'll sort that out for you but yeah having a look at this this is how i've set mine up i'll quickly explain how the switches work so these will all be blank auxiliary one is set to my my back right here you have three three switches on the back of your controller you'll feel it one two three on your right and again on the left basically what i've done is i've set my arm switch to my right hand side you can hear that now spinning up yeah okay right so basically click on that okay my battery's gonna die in a bit on my quad so hopefully there should be enough juice in this battery to get us through this demo and what you're going to do is you click on here add range and then set this to auxiliary one you then want to set your slider to the furthest right that will then allow you to arm your quad i don't know if you can see when i hit it right it flips so i'm, I'm set on the furthest switch not the second one that won't do nothing i'd rather have it all the way down before it starts the arm so that's how that's going to work there that's set to there next one is auxiliary two which i've got to my left switch which is on this side i have three different things set here i have on my first switch horizon which basically allow you to flip but keep once you let off it'll pull it back to horizon mode angle tilts forward i don't think it allows you to go any further than that and air mode's more of like your acro mode so i have them set to all three so the first one is horizon that's set to the first switch up and then second one you'll see angle and then air mode it's third and if you see these little lights i don't know if you can see my screen they quickly flitter between so you basically got to get all these points in the right order to to correspond for each channel one's hitting in this band when you hit it second you've got to then measure up the next band and then on the third one once you've done all that that should be pretty much ready to go we head down fail safe's going to be now lit up because you've activated that again i've set that as the middle switch i just think that's a nice place to hit it if the if it panicking you can just hit that and then i'll cut your motors after half a second and then all the quad will drop so it's enough of fail safe just to have there again i've set this to auxiliary four and it you know it's, it's not hit up there as soon as i turn it on it will bounce into the yellow mark and that will activate it and that's pretty much that if you've set all this up how I've done it here, then happy days. You will have to probably go into your menu on your controller. And what you will need to do is click auxiliary channels. And I'm just going to tell you what they are on mine, which work perfectly with this. So channel 5 is set to SWC. Channel 6 is set to SWB. 7 you ignore because that's the roll thing so that's nothing and then you'll notice when you go into 8 it'll say none uh, I got a bit confused because I wanted to set that to my fail safe and I weren't quite sure what to do uh, you'll see none what you do is you click on this button here and then you set it to SWX that allows you to add another switch and then set that to SWA which is A and that will work uh, it took me a few, a few minutes to out, but yeah, I've got there. So they are the settings on my controller, which correspond to everything I've done on this screen. So I'm just going to go through it again. Arm is set to auxiliary 1. Air mode set to auxiliary 2. Angle set to auxiliary 2. Horizon set to auxiliary 2. Failsafe set to auxiliary 4. And then you're just going to have to quickly look at how I've mapped these out. And once you've done that, you can then just save it. That is that. Then we're moving down to adjustments. Now we don't need to do anything in here. Servo, uh, no, don't need anything there. Motors, a little bit trickier. It might not work for me now because I've already done it, but I will try and do this for you. It's always best to, to you know test your motors and make sure they're they're working fine. At this point, guys, make definitely sure you've got no props on. What you have to do down here, you have to click on i understand the risks that will then allow you to activate your motors area so what you've got to do is click on that that will arm these don't touch this yet 
that will arm these options for you once you've done that. You have to unplug your battery from your quad, unplug that, make sure this is all the way set to the top when you unplug your battery. So unplug your battery, set this all the way to the top, and then plug the battery back in, you'll get some crazy noises. And that's now done that, and what you've got to do now with the battery still in is just bring that down and it'll do another bunch of noises, and that's calibrated. So that is now done. Pretty much everything here is done. There's no other safe button here because that's already done itself. I think that's pretty much it, guys. Just literally try and follow this video a few times. I know it's not gone into much detail like I did in the last video, but you can grab some of the information from the other one. There is a few new settings on here and um, what I want to try out. So just literally go through. Just make sure you've enabled the, the expert mode at the top and then slowly go through everything I've done on here and you should be ready to go. I'm going to stop the video here and then I'm going to move on to the Beheli uh, software update for your ESCs. I haven't done that yet so that will be something I'll be doing live with you right now. So let's get on to that and then we'll go from there. Plug your cable back into the computer so it's hooked up to your quad and put a battery in so it's got power to the quad. What you want to then do is head over to Google. You may need to go to the App Store here and you're typing in BLE Configurator um, and that will be your app. So make sure you've downloaded that. Okay, you may need to download some drivers. I haven't, they work for my uh, beta flight drivers. So hopefully that'll work for you. But again, there's some drivers down here in the link. Press connect. Okay, make sure propellers are off. Yeah, connect all the ESCs while they are so ready set up. Okay, so we're in. Let's have a quick look. ESC one, two, three, and four. Okay, so that's what we're going to be working with. Okay, I'm not going to be messing around with these settings too much, but there is some more settings for you to go into here. By the looks of things, if you're doing a build, you can actually uh, set the reverse mode on some of the motors. So if you need to tell which way it needs to go, I think that's what you can do, but we're actually just going to update the ESCs. Keep it on normal, uh, yeah, here we go, so you can reverse reverse them, which you're not going to be doing because it's already built and ready to go, so all we want to do is update them. At the moment, it's probably telling you 16.6 is where it's at. First thing we want to do, don't touch anything else, just literally hit flash firmware, select version, Okay, 6.6 .6, I think is the newest one. Yes, 16.6. .6. I think that's the newest one it's giving you. So yeah, keep on that. I'm just going to check on there. Okay, and what we want to do is flash. Okay, and there we go. Let's do it. Well, that's easier than I thought. Just literally just hit flash. So that's one ESC, let's go to the next one, flash, keep it on the same version, click on 16.6, .6. flash. Uh, next one, click on flash, just click the version, 16.6, .6. flash. And final ESC, keep on normal, flash firmware, version 16.6, .6, and flash. And that is doing it. And we are done, guys. So that is updated your ESCs. Actually, everything we've done tonight is pretty much ready to go. You can rebuild your quad, put it all back together, and you are ready to, to hit the field and start flying. What I might quickly do is just disconnect this. 
So that's now disconnected. I can close all this down. And what I will quickly do is just show you. I'll unplug the USB now because I don't need that. I'll turn on the controller. Hopefully there's enough battery in there just to get me going. Make sure everything's set to zero, guys. And what we should have now is, as soon as I flip down, all the way to the bottom, our arms there. And if I hit this middle bit, it should give me half a second and cut the motors. Yeah, fail safe's working perfectly. Set that back to zero, put all the switches back in. And you should be able to go, there you go. And if you listen, the motors dip up and down. That is the different uh, modes that you're gonna be in. Yeah, just set them to what you feel comfortable to take off in and then yeah, you can have a bit of fun as you go along. But yeah, there you go, everything is working. Awesome guys, hopefully this helps. I know it's a bit quick and rushed, but yeah, I'm kind of rushed for time myself. Hopefully this video has helped you to get everything set up with your new Turner G controller, so your quad and some updates of Beta Flight and also uh, Beheli software. Awesome, I'll see you on the main screen. Hey guys, so that's the Turner G Evolution now talking to your quad. All the settings are in there are perfect. I, it's everything I'd use myself. But by all means, go back in, make it your own, tweak it to how it works for you. But this will definitely get you out flying. If you've got any comments, drop them below. I'll pick them up and answer them the best I can. So yeah, that was the uh, Esheen Wizard with the Turner G Evolution. Uh, hopefully that's helped a few of you out. But happy flying, be safe, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.